Hey guys, it's Doc, and today I'm going to take you on an amazing hunt. I'm going to go hunting after the deadliest animal in the world. Is it the shark? No, it's, oh my gosh, it's the stupid mosquito that kills almost 700,000 people a year. It's the deadliest animal, so hold on. Hey guys, it's Doc, and yes, today we're going to be hunting that stupid mosquito. That stupid mosquito that kills almost 700,000 people a year. And I'm telling you, this year and the next few years, it's going to be a serious problem with Zika and everything else that's coming out. And it and it's kind of like a catch-up thing where it's not that important until all of a sudden everyone starts talking about it. But if you get ahead of it, you really can make a difference in your own backyard. And especially if you can get some neighbors together, you can make a difference in your neighbor. So first of all, uh, we put up a new website, howtowithdoc.com. And one of the reasons why we did that, so we could organize all of our how-to videos, plus we have updated information. So if I make a video three months ago and information has changed or there's better information down below that video on the page, I can actually put updated information. I can put updated links. If a product's been discontinued or changed names, whatever it is. So make sure you go to howtowithdoc.com. It's a good place. You can go there weekly and check for new videos. You can also click that little red subscribe button right here. I think it's here. It's not here, is it? When you click that subscribe button, uh, you'll get notified uh, when we put out new videos. And we cover just about everything. Today is mosquitoes, and I'm going to run through the whole process. I'm going to actually take you with me while I'm treating for mosquitoes. I'm going to show you a perfect example of a hidden little area where mosquitoes hide and how you can treat them at home yourself. Now, there are a ton of options for mosquito chemicals and mosquito treating products, but I do want you to understand that a lot of mosquitoes build up resistance, and that's why I'm doing what I do. I've learned that this trick reduces my mosquito population over 50%. Matter of fact, there are times when I can come out here at dusk and we have no mosquitoes out here. But first, let's talk about the mosquito. Real quick, I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of facts, but yes, mosquitoes kill approximately 700,000 people a year. I think people, 10 people a year die from sharks. So I don't know why you're worried about swimming in the ocean when you got killers in your backyard, especially for you and your pets. It's the most deadly animal in the world. Plus they're annoying too. So uh, we have a swimming pool and that's why I really take the extra step in doing what I'm doing right now so we can come out and enjoy the pool. The female mosquito, is the only mosquito that actually bites. And mosquitoes don't feed on humans. Mosquitoes, the female mosquito, we got tons of gnats out here from all this rain. The female mosquito bites because she needs your blood to produce eggs. You understand? She doesn't feed, she's not feeding. She's sucking your blood so that she can actually, actually produce eggs. And uh, I think the average mosquito, female mosquito, it's like 100 to 300 eggs that they can produce somewhere in there. And then she goes, once she bites you, and she'll hide somewhere and let those eggs mature. And then she's going to go find standing water, some type of standing water, and lay her eggs in there. And then those eggs are going to turn into other mosquitoes. So, but the amazing thing is, is that mosquitoes can actually lay their eggs and eggs can actually hatch in as little as one teaspoon of standing water. Let me say it again. Mosquito eggs can hatch in as little as one teaspoon of standing water. So you got a female mosquito when they're laying 150, you got 150 new mosquitoes out of one little teaspoon. And I'm going to show you some footage of a little pool I found back here inside of a tree with actual, uh, I don't know what stage it is, but the little swimmers, the eggs that have already hatched in there. I don't know if it's larva or whatever it is. So I'm going to show you that here in a second. But mosquitoes don't like the heat of the day, and it's a really good time that you can go out. So if you're out here at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it's 90 degrees, it's hot, it's scalding. Mosquitoes don't like that because they can actually dehydrate and they can actually die. So that's a good time of the day. You know that they're going to be hiding in the places where they hide, which are dark, damp shaded environments. So if you have woods, which I'm going to show you in a minute, if you have a lot of woods behind your house, good place to go. If you have storage areas, you know, um, buckets all the time. I find buckets around my yard that have water in them. Yesterday, I'm, I'm real good about this. And yesterday I found three. I found a tub that had turned over. I found a bucket that had turned over. I went and emptied them all. Empty every single thing. Play toys. If you have play equipment, if you have basketball goals, all those things can turn into just an absolute breeding ground for mosquitoes. So you need to check those. And sometimes it's just like underneath it or something, there's a pool of standing water or inside of it. So make sure you check it. Tarps. 
I've got tarps back here, and there's little puddles of water. You'd be amazed. You go up to it and you see these little things swimming around in it. So you really got to take the time every week to sort of walk around your property and see where the pooling water is and either treat it or get rid of the pooling water. Uh, you have the yellow fever mosquito and the Asian tiger mosquito here in the southeast that are probably the most popular. I feel like I'm getting bit right now. And uh, a lot of those mosquitoes don't have a big travel pattern. Some of the mosquitoes will only travel maybe 300 feet from their actual nest. So you can have an impact on those type of mosquitoes. Now there are other mosquitoes like the salt marsh mosquito they'll travel you know, 40,000 miles or something like that. But our residential mosquitoes, especially here in the southeast, um, they don't travel all that far. And it, I'll tell you what, if you can get your neighbors to buy into this and treat you know, several homes or get together as a community and do this, it will really make a difference. But if nothing else, treat your own area. At least you know you're, you're controlling your mosquito hatch population and it will have an impact. I would say at least 50% of the mosquitoes that you'll be reducing it by. To give you a tour around the place so you can see, I'm not really worried. I'm not really worried about my lawn areas. There's not a whole lot here. The only thing I am gonna be worried about is if I have big bushes, big thick bushes, sometimes mosquitoes can hide in there. But really what I'm worried about is see all this wooded area back here? All this wooded area back here, it's damp, it's shaded, it's cool. Perfect place for mosquitoes to hide all day long. And when the sun comes out, this is a good time to do it, like one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, if you have a really hot day, it's a great time to head back here and actually do some treatments. Typically, they're gonna be low, they're gonna be ground level up to about 10 feet. But especially if I have a lot of heavy brush back here and it's damp, it's moist, it's cool, that's the areas I'm gonna be targeting. So I'm gonna go from ground up to about 10 feet. But you can see I've got all this area back in here. Those are all woods, heavy wooded areas all the way back here. And those are the areas that I'm gonna be targeting specifically. And I'm gonna take you back there when I spray. I'll hook up a camera to the hose and I'll take this camera back there and I'll take you, I'll take you back with me. So let me show you real quick. Now, I do things simple. I'm not going to send you on a journey to get a whole bunch of products online from do-it-yourself pest control centers. I'm going to I'm going to show you a simple solution. As an example, cutter backyard control kills mosquitoes, ants, and fleas. Kills fast. Covers 5,000 square feet long. Lasts all summer, 12 weeks long. Uh, I typically do a spray every month back here for our mosquitoes, and I find that works well. But I'm going to tell you a little secret that I do. So. Typically, these bottles will come in filled up uh, probably about almost all the way, but there's a, usually a little bit of space in here. And so what I do is I typically fill that space up with a secondary spray. You can take a look at the active ingredient in here, and what I'm going to be adding is a different type of um, pesticide inside of this. So I'm going to be blending these two pesticides so I get a double treatment. So I'll put this bottle in. I'm probably going to put an equal amount of biffin in there. Um, and that way I'll be putting out two pesticides as I spray. That's the way I do it and of course as I always do I add dye to my sprays. Why do I do that? Well there's a video of adding dye to your spray, your lawn sprays. I'd watch that video. It's not to add color to what I'm spraying. Anytime you use a hose end sprayer you have the potential for that hose end sprayer to clog up or malfunction. If you put the blue dye inside of it your spray will turn blue or green. And you know that that chemical is being dispersed through that hose and sprayer. And I'm telling you, I don't care how good of a sprayer you have, add a little bit of dye and that way you know when that chemical is coming out. You know when you've run out. I'm telling you, don't ever use any kind of spray without a little bit of dye in it at least so you can tell that it's actually coming out. Um, so let's go over some of the things you need. Number one, you need a crap load of hose. I gotta reach, like I said, I gotta reach all the way back to that fence. And then once I get through that fence, I gotta go spray all those woods back there. So I'm probably gonna have 500 feet of hose. Unfortunately, that's what you gotta have. The type of hose I like to have, well, what I do is I run my normal hose back there and uh, maybe I'll put a link up to the Zero G hose. I'm a big fan of these hoses, the Zero Gs. It's a fabric, it's really soft. It's not one of those stupid expandable hoses. Uh, this is, these hoses, I've had this hose, you can see it's faded. I've had it for over two years, left it outside, haven't taken care of it. And uh, man, they're just phenomenal. They're half the weight, they seldom kink. That's all I buy now are zero G hoses. And you can get them in 25, 50, and 100 foot lengths. 
and I've got them in all. So I'm going to be bringing on a buttload of hoses out there. Um, you're also going to want, I recommend wearing some type of brimmed hat if you have one, some type of mask. I'm just going to use a, a 3M. This is just a regular 3M health mask. So it's actually a really good mask. But And then some type of eye goggles. Because you are going to be back there. Don't forget, you're going to be spraying up, or spraying up and spraying around. And that mist is going to be all around you. Put on a set of clothes. Put on old crappy clothes. That's all I own, so I'm fine. Uh, that you can take the clothes off once you actually finish it. Rubber boots. If you're going to be out in the woods, there's a lot of ticks around. There's chiggers. There's bugs. So what I do is I put on rubber boots and I coat my rubber boots in deep insects. The next thing I do, I'm going to be back in their back in their neighborhood in their living room. So I'm going to cover myself in backwoods off. You can use whatever you want. Or this is the cutter backwoods. Um, so I'm going to cover myself in this backwoods, my legs, my all my shorts, all my clothes. I'm going to cover myself in this, especially not just for mosquitoes, but chiggers and ticks too. So when I head back there, I'm going to be stinking. When I come back out, I want to take off these clothes and throw them in the washing machine. Maybe even just drop, jump in the shower real quick. Hot soapy water, get all that crap off of me. So here's the product. I'm going to, here are the products. Now you can use just the cutter and go spray in the back and just spray back in the, with the cutter. But here's what I like to do. I take the cutter backyard control. I'll take one or two of these and I'll dump it in my bucket. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little surfactant. Why do I add surfactant? Because a lot of the leaves back there are gonna be wet. And if you'll notice that water beads up on blades of grass. And the surfactant actually stops that beading action from happening and it actually, it coats it better. So I put a little bit of surfactant actually inside of this. It coats a little better out back. There's my blue dye. I put in blue dye for it. And there's my Biffin IT. Now my Biffin IT, uh, I'll put a link up to where you can get that stuff. But this this big bottle I have will probably last me a couple years to be honest. Because I'll only be adding about four ounces of the Biffin to this bottle in here. But again, I've got the extra room in the bottle, and so why not add a secondary termos, uh, insecticide to it? So that's what I do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dye in here. Um, just about a tablespoon is all you need. That's about two tablespoons of dye. I'm going to put the cutter in here. Now, why did I put a little bit of water in here? Uh, just because, again, I put about eight ounces of water. Because the Biffin IT has a different viscosity than then this cutter backyard control and this spray tip uh, will have a little bit dispersion rate. So um, that's why I put a teeny bit of water. Now I'm gonna add some surfactant. You don't need much, just a little bit of surfactant. I'll probably end up maybe even using, going with, uh, actual two bottles of this and probably 16 ounces of this Biffin. Again, I'm mixing up, making up this um, super mix that as I like to call it. It works really well. I found that it's very effective on mosquitoes. And cut in. Hey guys, I'm gonna cut in here with a pretty important special note about these hose and sprayers and doing this little process that I talk about. Um, each one of these chemicals has a different viscosity and a lot of times the sprayers on top of the bottles are actually matched up to match the viscosity of the fluid. So when you mix two chemicals together you need to kind of understand the viscosity and how these things are going to come out. And that actually got a little frustrating for me today. Um, the, the advanced, the cutter formula is kind of a liquid formula. So when you put the biffin inside of it, which is kind of thick, it, it kind of thickens it up and the dispersion rate is a little bit too low for me. So I actually grabbed, I actually grabbed my, uh, my, my regular mixer, tried it, but the problem with these regular mixers, uh, I've got two or three of them, is that there just isn't a lot of PSI going through them. In other words, I want a big fan spray. I want to be able to cover a big area with a fine mist. And these little sprayers, I forget the name of that thing, I forget, but all these type of mixers and sprayers that are hose in are really kind of a low pressure sprayer. And I want a high pressure sprayer that shoots out in the fine mist. So I always save 
I always save my empty bottles or at least my empty heads, these heads right here, and I write on the top of it usually, whether it's a medium thick or thin spray. And so you'll see me in the video, I actually switched out the cutter sprayer, which was coming out, there wasn't enough blue because I was using blue dye, there wasn't enough blue in it. So I went and got one of these sprayers off of, uh, I forget what it was for, uh, for weed and feed or something, a thicker formula, put it on it and tested it and now I had a nice thick blue spray and that's what I was looking for. So it can get a little confusing, but you just need to be aware that if you don't see what you think is enough formula coming out, you may have to change and adjust this sprayer. It's just a little note, again, the uh, the attachments that you can buy that are your mixing attachments with the dials on them, they generally are a low volume, a low pressure sprayer. They just they just sort of go out in there for lawns and flowers. They're not like this, which is a big that big spray, which has that big mist and will get up in the foliage and spray all around. That's really what you want. So that's the only kind the only kind of drawback to doing this system is that. You are mixing two velocity, two viscosities of formula, and you do need to compensate for that. I will let you know that. So hopefully that's not too confusing for you. But again, save these things and just write on it. When you, before you throw, if you're gonna throw away the bottle, then write on the top whether it's thick, medium, or thin, and that way you'll know. So if you ever do have to mix anything, because I really would prefer not to water down the Biffin. I want to keep it at full strength, and uh, so that's why I switched it out. So let's get back to the video. <laughs> okay, so if you think I was kidding about the hoses, needing a whole buttload of them, let me show you. I pulled out every hose in my arsenal. I've got another one over here. I'll probably need it. Pulled out all my hoses. Now, if you have a hose reel with a couple hundred feet of hose on it, it works great in that G-force. But I've got some of my old rubber hoses here, and you can see all the way down here, I've got every single hose I have. And what I like to do is, it's real important when you're doing this, is lay your hoses out flat where you're not gonna, once you start pulling, you're not gonna get any kinks on them because it's a pain in the butt to have to shut off that sprayer and then go back because you got a kink in the hose. But you can see, I, mean, I got hoses everywhere, but I gotta reach. I gotta, I'm gonna be spraying all around here on this fence, all back here, and then I'm gonna go through the gate, and I'm gonna go into the wood, so I gotta drag my hose over here, I'll put it over the fence. I mean, it's a real pain in the butt, but it's worth it. All right, so let's enter the death zone here. All right, so I want you to look back here. So I need to have these trees cut back. We'll probably kick up a deer back here, to be honest. But I want you to look at this. Look at this lovely, I can just smell the dampness. It smells like rotting damp back here. Let me make sure there's no snakes I'm gonna step on. But look at this. Now this, my friends, this is mosquito heaven. I guarantee you I'm gonna to start to get bit here in a few minutes but I mean just look at that crap and I guarantee you if I move some yep there's a mosquito right there let me try and find this like I give you an example see that hole right there I don't know what's living there it's just a rotten hole mosquitoes will go and actually go inside little caves and holes like that but look at this See that split tree? Look at this. And there's actually, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's actually mosquito larva actually in there right now. That's a good example right there. See that right there? That's mosquito larva. See them all swimming around? And that, my friends, and that's coming from that little tree. So if you think it has to be a big water source to be a breeding ground for mosquitoes, you're absolutely wrong. That's a tiny, look at my foot. So there's my foot and there's that little breeding pool. 
and there's probably hundreds if not thousands of mosquitoes ready to hatch out of that stupid thing and these little things happen everywhere so you see this hole there's a hole right down in there and the mosquitoes will go in there I mean they love to breed in this water but there's gonna be water these stupid water puddles all over the place and there's probably this little growth hole right here there's probably about 20 of them in here again we have had that the tropical storm came up here and we've had 10 days of solid solid rain and it's just launched all these bugs so i have to get out and spray for mosquitoes all right so one thing i have learned to do is to put one of these little valves on the end of my hose it makes life a lot easier and i've got all this hose and so i gotta let this water bleed out let your hose bleed out remember you got a huge i got 100 200 300 right now i've got almost 400 feet of hose so uh, i gotta let all that air bleed out make sure it's all bleeding out once it's done once it's done i'll hook up the sprayer I am uh, I am pretty much done so I have sprayed all around the outside of my fence I've got the ground I've got the canopies I've been in the woods that they watch me do all that crap so I'm basically done with my treatment I did it a little bit earlier than I wanted to in the day just so I have better recording light to be honest because if it gets too bright it's hard to record but really that high noon to 2 p.m. it's a great time to go hit these these spots back here again this is a storage this is a little storage area for a lot of our pool stuff and shovels and crap I go back in here and I find little water pools all the time so I actually went back there and sprayed just about everything in there no one goes back there no one touches anything it's just pumps and pool equipment and whatever but that's a great place to actually go and spray again all these little buckets and tubs those little water holes that you find in trees all that low foliage so that's all done guys so I've done that I used to do it we had a cabin up in the mountains that was had horrible it has a big valley and creek we used to spray up there um, we we've sprayed here all last year the first year the second year now into this third summer that we've been here and let me tell you what, just doing our own yard has really dropped down these, the mosquito problem at least 50%. We can walk out here in our yard and not get touched most evenings. And if I walk a few houses up up the street, I'll get, I'll get covered in them. So it does make a big difference. Anyways, guys, don't forget, check out the new website, howtowithdoc.com. Click that little subscribe button. And uh, I'm soaking wet. I'm tired. 
it's an ass whipping dude when you got this much stuff to do but now i gotta go put away all this stuff i gotta go put away all these damn hoses so talk to you later Dog.